Good morning and welcome to St. Peter's Online for our worship together uh, this Sunday. And as we come together, our prayer is that each one of us will find at the feet of Jesus that sense of peace and refreshing and renewing. And that even though we are scattered, yet we might feel the fellowship of the Holy Spirit drawing us closer together in the love of God. So let us pray at the start of our time of worship together. Loving Heavenly Father, we pray that you would be with us during this time of our worship, this time of our praise, that, Lord, you would anoint us and anoint each person that is part of this service, and that, Father, that each one of us might be able to touch the hem of your garments and to hear your voice calling us to that place, Lord, where we can meet with you, our lives being changed and transformed, that, Lord, when we leave this place, we might know we have been with the Lord. So, Father, we give this time to you, and we ask that you would be honored and glorified in Jesus' name. Amen. And our opening responses, uh, I'd invite you to join us with the bold print that is there. Peace to you who are near, and peace to those who are far away. Through Christ, we all can approach the Father, through the one Holy Spirit. Amen. The Lord declares, I am about to come and gather all nations and tongues, and they will come and see my glory. Jesus Christ has made us to be a kingdom and priests to serve his God and Father. To him be glory and power for ever and ever. Amen. And so we worship the Lord together in song. Let 
Our prayers today are taken from the Psalms, which was the prayer book of Jesus. And in Psalm 139, verses 23 to 24, the psalmist writes, Search me, O God, and know my heart. Test me and know my anxious thoughts. See if there is any offensive way in me, and lead me in the way 
everlasting. And so we come to our time of confession. We spend a few moments uh, shortly in silence where we make our own personal confession before the Lord for the times that we have sinned in thought or word or deed and we seek his forgiveness for ourselves before we join together in our corporate confession. So let's be quiet before the Lord for a few moments. And so let's pray for ourselves and for one another as we say, O Lord, hear our prayer as we cry for your mercy. Come to help us in your faithfulness and righteousness. Do not bring us to judgment, for no one is innocent before you. Answer us now, Lord. Do not hide yourself from us. Show us the way to go. Rescue us from the enemy. Teach us to do your will. And by your Holy Spirit, lead us in a safe path for your name's sake. Amen. And a few verses from Psalm 103 that says, The Lord is compassionate and gracious, slow to anger, abounding in love. He will not always accuse nor will he harbor his anger forever. He does not treat us as our sins deserve or repay us according to our iniquities. For as high as the heavens are above the earth, so great is his love for those who fear him. As far as the east is from the west, so far has he removed our transgressions from us. Amen.
Today's Bible reading is 2 Kings chapter 5 verses 1 to 16. Naaman healed of leprosy. Now Naaman was commander of the army of the king of Aram. He was a great man in the sight of his master and highly regarded because through him the Lord had given victory to Aram. He was a valiant soldier, but he had leprosy. Now bands from Aaron had gone out and taken captive a young girl from Israel, and she served Naaman's wife. She said to her mistress, If only my master would see the prophet who is in Samaria, he would cure him of his leprosy. Naaman went to his master and told him what the girl from Israel had said. By all means go, the king of Aram replied. I will send a letter to the king of Israel. So Naaman left, taking with him ten talents of silver, six thousand shekels of gold and ten sets of clothing. The letter that he took to the king of Israel read, with this letter, I am sending my servant Naaman to you, so that you may cure him of his leprosy. As soon as the king of Israel read the letter, he tore his robes and said, Am I God? Can I kill and bring back to life? Why does this fellow send someone to me to be cured of his leprosy? See how he is trying to pick a quarrel with me. When Elijah, the man of God, heard that the king of Israel had torn his robes, he sent this message. Why have you torn your robes? Make the man come to me, and he will know that there is a prophet in Israel. So Naaman went with his horses and chariots and stopped at the door of Elisha's house. Elisha sent a messenger to say to him, Go, wash yourselves seven times in the Jordan and your flesh will be restored and you will be cleansed. But Naaman went away angry and said, I thought that he would surely come out to me and stand and call on the name of the Lord his God, wave his hand over the spot and cure me of my leprosy. Are not Abana and Farpa, the rivers of Damascus, better than any of the waters of Israel? Couldn't I wash in them and be cleansed? So he turned and went off in rage. Naaman's servants went to him and said, My father, if the prophet had told you to do some great thing, would you not have done it? How much more then when he tells you, wash and be cleansed? So he went down and dipped himself in the Jordan seven times as the man of God had told him, and his flesh was restored and became clean like that of a young boy. Then Naaman and all his attendants went back to the man of God. He stood before him and said, Now I know that there is no God in all the world except in Israel. Please accept now a gift from your servant. The prophet answered, As surely as the Lord lives, whom I serve, I will not accept a thing. And even though Naaman urged him, he refused. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Let's pray. Heavenly Father, we, as we come to your word, we ask that you would speak to our hearts. In the story of Naaman, may we see uh, lessons that we can learn. May we learn the key of receiving your blessings. For we ask it in Jesus' name. Amen. Helen has just read for us uh, from the second book of Kings, chapter 5, and it's the healing of uh, Naaman, the commander of the king of Aram, from his leprosy 
And I wonder as we read this story, what it speaks to us and what you think the story's about. For me today, as I look at this passage, is a simple question. How am I responding to God's command on my life? I know that God wants to bless me. That's what his word tells me. I know that God wants to heal me because that is what his word tells me. I know that God wants to fill me with the heavenly blessings, all the heavenly blessings in Christ Jesus because that is what his word tells me in Ephesians chapter 1. That is what God wants to do. Now from Naaman's story we can learn some, some lessons hopefully this morning about how we receive God's blessing and what God wants to give us. Naaman had a need. His need was that he needed to be healed. He carried the stigma and the sign of his illness with him wherever he went. It wasn't one of those kind of things where he hid it away inside of himself, but he carried it around with him wherever he went. And everybody knew that he had it. And his one desire was that he wanted to be set free from this illness that he had. He wanted to be set free from this disease that was taking away from his life, that was stealing away from him, his joy, his peace, his comfort, anything that is good, it did take away. Now Naaman, in the course of his journey towards his healing, has to learn a few lessons. The first lesson is hearing the voice of God, hearing the call of God out to him. Where do you hear God speaking to you? Do you like to listen to the big preachers because that is where God speaks to you? Rather than the ones that you hear every week and every year, every month, uh, and you know, well, they're nice to listen to, but actually God speaks to you through those big speakers, the guys who write 20 books. Or does God speak to you in a loud voice that shakes the rafters and the windows and you know within yourself that the voice has spoken to you? Does God speak to you from flashing lights or a pulsating throne room? For Naaman, he heard the call come to him twice and two commands or two directions spoken to him about how he could receive this blessing and this healing that God had prom that God had for him. The first one was came to his servant girl, a slave, a slip of a girl, a little wisp of a thing who hadn't seen much of the world, in fact had been dragged in chains and was now working in his house as a slave, as a servant girl, helping his wife. And she says to her mistress, if only my master could go to Samaria to the man of God that is there and he would be healed. So he hears this and he heeds this advice because what he does is he goes to his king and says, listen, this is what this girl is saying to me that has been brought. Now probably the king knew of every cure and every different thing that he had tried and known that none of them had been successful. So he says, okay, you go. I'll write a letter for you to the king of Israel. You go and you ask him. So of course Naaman goes off, letter in his hand, and he takes a purse of gold and silver and many gifts to take along to the king and to show him how worthy he was of receiving the sealing. And of course he doesn't. The king can't do anything. Because the king is a mere mortal man. And in fact, the king gets really upset about this. But, I, but Elisha hears about this and he says to the king, don't worry, send him to me. He'll be healed. So of course, Naaman and his retinue of servants and his, his guard, they get up and they go off to the prophet. They're carrying this, these gifts of gold, etc. And listen, the insult of all things. The prophet didn't even dare come out of his house to talk to him. But sent him word and said, listen, 
River Jordan, go down there and get yourself washed out. Dip in it seven times and you will be made clean. You will be cleansed and healed. And of course, this guy gets angry. He gets furious. He's insulted and slighted because this prophet has not even bothered to come and talk to him. And not only has he ignored him in that way, slighted him in that way, but he's also told him, go and wash in this river Jordan. Now, the river Jordan might sound like a very grand name to us. And in flood, the river Jordan was a force to be reckoned with. It was, it overflowed its banks, it was wide, it was deep, the water rushed hard and fast. But when it wasn't in flood, it was not much more than the river Arrow that runs down through the Arrow Valley at this point. It would have been filthy because it had passed over mud beds. It would have been filthy and the prophet's telling him to go and wash himself in this. And actually by his reaction and response, out of his flesh as it were, he misses the point. He misses the command or the word of healing that is being spoken to him. Go and wash yourself by dipping yourself seven times in the river Jordan. And of course he, he knew that they had better rivers, more powerful rivers in his own country. Why could he not go back there and actually dip in there and be cleansed? If it was simply a matter of dipping in running water, he'd get a better deal up there. And best of all, he wouldn't have to pay for it. But actually, he misses God speaking to him through the prophet. Because God is calling out to, to Naaman simply to be obedient. He moved that servant girl to say, if only my master would go to the man of God in Samaria. And what does Naaman do? He goes off to the king of Israel. Obviously, he works for the king. He, he demands that kind of royal respect. He himself was almost like a prince in his own right. And he was coming bearing gifts. You know, he was going to buy. And if he was going to buy, he was going to buy the best possible place. But he misses the point. Go to the man of God. When he finally does turn up at the door of the man of God, he again misses the point because he expected a lot of fanfare. He expected a lot of people over there to see this wonderful, marvelous miracle that was going to take place. There would be choir singing, there would be people dancing with flags, there would be this noise that would be going up and Elijah would stand there and he would, he would call out these loud voices in a loud voice and Naaman would be healed. None of that. Not a single television camera in sight. Go down to the river. Dip yourselves, yourself seven times. In that filthy, stinky, dirty old river, that ditch that you call a river. Uh -uh, I'm not doing it. I'm going home. And because he was walking in this, in this attitude of what we call pride, he almost missed that healing and that miracle that God had for him. It took another one of his attendants, one of his servants coming up to him and saying, listen, if he had told you to go and dip seven times in a mighty river or to do some wonderful act, would you not have done it? Yes, I would have. He said, then when he's telling you to do this, why don't you do it so that you can be cleaned? And he listens the third time and he goes down to that river 
into the dirty, filthy, sluggish, brown river Jordan. In front of everybody there, people washing their clothes, others just sitting there trying to catch fish or talking. Others who are gawking and rubbernecking to see what he's up to. As he lays aside his armor and his clothes and he gets into the water and dips into it seven times. And the seventh time as he comes out, he is healed. His skin is restored and he's made clean. So he comes running back to the prophet. And he says, I'm healed. And he says, surely as the Lord lives. Now I know that there is a God in Israel. Because I have felt the touch of the Lord on me. He touched me. Oh, he touched me. And what a joy that filled my soul. Something happened. And now I know he saved my soul. Because he was touched by the Lord in the river. And he was made clean. Now he does something. He's brought this money to pay the prophet for his healing. Whether he thought he could buy his healing or whether he thought he could reward for his healing. And Elisha refuses to take it. He says, I will not receive a thing from you. Because the gift of God is free. Now what do we learn from this for ourselves today? When we come in faith to God and ask, he freely gives to whoever asks in faith. We need to come asking, believing, because God is a rewarder of those that seek him. But sometimes that call to come to God and believe him for something comes from the strangest of places. In Naaman's case, it was from a servant girl and it was from one of his attendants. He heard the prophet, but the prophet did not come out to speak to him and he felt slighted. It didn't happen as he would have scripted it. But when he was obedient to what he was being told to do, he was healed. And God made him whole. Now there's a lesson in that for us today. God speaks to us sometimes in the most unlikely ways. In the most unlikely places we hear God speaking to us. But when God speaks to us, how do we respond? Do we try to bribe our way out? Do we try to buy our way out? Do we try to do it on our terms and the ways that we want to do it? Or do we do it as God is just simply telling us? You see, we can't buy our salvation. We can't earn our salvation. That is simply a gift of God. For by grace are you saved through faith. It is the gift of God. Not of anything that we can do. It is a gift of God lest any one of us boast. I was able to get the healing from Elisha because I was able to write him a big fat check. Or I was healed by Elisha because Elisha recognized how important a person I am. But he had to be obedient. He had to humble himself. He had to be obedient in order to be able to receive his healing. You see, faith recognizes that in God is our healing. In God is our salvation. Faith recognizes I can't bring anything in my hand. Nothing in my hands I bring. Simply to your cross I cling. 
naked, broken, bleeding. I have no recourse simply to call out in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. Coming to him, trusting him. He may not do it the way that I would like him to do it. He may not do it in the way that tells people how important I am. He may not do it in a way that enables me to say, well, actually, it's because of the money I have and what I do for the church and all the things that I do. He may not do it because we are telling him what we want him to do rather than saying, God, what do you want to do in this situation? What do you want to speak to me? What do you want to do in my heart and my life? When when we hand ourselves over to God and say, God, whatever your will is, I want your will to be fulfilled in my life. You know, we see a blessing of God's hand in our life in a way that recognizes his authority, that recognizes his heart and his desire, working in a way that I would never have thought of. God doesn't want me to come to him with my blueprints and my plans. He wants to do it his way. Do you remember the story of the centurion in the Gospels? His servant lay sick. Servant was faithful, a good servant. And he obviously had a lot of affection for his servant because he gets some of the Jewish leaders to go and get Jesus to come and heal his servant. And they come along and tell Jesus what a good man he is, etc., etc. And Jesus, anyway, unlike Elisha and and Naaman, Jesus goes off to heal him. And on the way, that centurion sends him a message by his servants and says, Master, please don't come. I'm not worthy to have you in my house or under my roof. Wherever you are, just say the word. And my son, my servant, will be healed. I'm not worthy. And Jesus heard the servants and he spoke the word and the servant was healed. He was raised from his sick bed. In that moment, in that very hour, he was healed. And Jesus' testimony of that centurion was that nowhere in the house of Israel could the faith be found that that man had exercised? Because you know what? He left it to Jesus. He said, I also am a man under authority. But if I say to somebody, go, they go. If I say to them, come, come. But he's not trying to tell Jesus how important he is as a centurion. He says, because I recognize authority, I recognize that if you only say the word, my servant will be healed. It's recognizing God's hand in our healing. It's recognizing God's hand at work in our lives. So I suppose I want to end with asking ourselves this question. It's a question that I've asked myself, so I take the liberty of using the word you when I'm asking the question. What is God saying to you? What are you hearing that in the deepest recesses of your heart and your mind is nudging you to turn to God and seek the healing? What is your need that you think you haven't actually asked God for now? Ask him. 
and then wait and see as he heals. He may tell you to do something really silly and some of the things God has told some of the prophets in the Old Testament to do have been rather strange. But Elijah says, go and wash yourself, dip yourself in the river seven times. But you see, when we are obedient to what God is saying to us, when we are obedient to what God is calling us to do, that we begin to see the healing of God in our lives. Jesus came to show us the way to the Father. Jesus came that we might be able to hear the Father speak to us individually, speak to us as families, speak to us as a church, speak to us as a community. What is he saying to you today? Is there something that he has asked you to do that you have been disobedient and not done? Or have you, like Naaman, reason that you know a better way? But you know, our ways, whatever we think of, are not higher than God's ways, even though God's ways might lie at the, on the riverbed of the River Jordan. Because God says, my ways are not your ways. My thoughts are not your thoughts. My ways are higher than your ways. He calls us. He calls us to humble ourselves. He calls us to let go of our pride. Pride in our achievements. Pride in our status. Pride in our strength. Pride in our riches. Pride in our gifts and our talents. He calls us to let go of it. He calls us to just do in obedience what he has called us to do. Don't boast if you're strong. Don't boast in your wisdom. Don't boast in your riches, I, Jeremiah says. If anyone boasts, let him boast in this, God says, that they know me, the only wise God. Let's lay aside our pride. Pride of life. Pride of strength and youth. The pride of our mind and our achievements. And come humbly to him to seek restoration, to seek his blessing. Let's pray. For a few moments of quiet, I want you to be able to bring to God the things that you've been longing for. To recognize where you have tried to do it in your own strength and today let's make that decision that promise Lord wherever you lead I will go Lord Jesus I have promised to follow you all the way to the end be my master be my friend Father, 
I pray that the words that you spoke into each one of our hearts, including mine this morning, that you, Lord, would watch over those words and cause them to make us uncomfortable till we move from that place of where we find our security and the things we are proud of to the place, Lord, where you can meet our needs and heal us. Master, speak the word and I shall be healed. In Jesus' name, Amen. And Jackie now leads us in our time of prayer. Good morning. Let us pray. Our first prayer today is written by Reverend Heather Moody, inspired by our Christ scripture passage. Forgive us and heal us. O oh God, we confess that like the warrior Naaman, we sometimes only think you perform great complicated acts in flashy and dramatic ways. We then fail to see how you are at work in the simple tasks and ordinary experiences of everyday life. Forgive us for our misunderstanding and heal us of our sightlessness. There is no pain that God cannot heal. There is no wrong that God cannot forgive. Come, immerse yourselves in the healing waters of God's forgiveness. Come and be restored. Let God make you whole. Thanks be to God. Amen. We pray for our church family members, friends and relatives who have lost loved ones during this pandemic through the effects of the virus and of other causes. Those who have not been able to comfort and be with friends and loved ones who are also suffering pain and loss. We ask Lord that you bring your comfort and compassion upon them. Hold them in your arms as they weep. We pray that we will soon be able to be and comfort with those in this dark place. Let your light shine, Lord. Amen. We pray for those on their own and feeling lonely, for those who are suffering from dementia, as this isolation makes their symptoms so much worse, for those who find it difficult to comprehend the restrictions that are in place for their own safety. Lord, be with them and let them find great warmth from you. We pray for carers that they may have true compassion and understanding in difficult situations brought on by stress. We pray for your protection for them all and keep them healthy and safe from infection. We pray for those recovering from illness, those known to us and mentioned in the weekly catch. We pray also Lord for those unknown to us that they too will know your healing. Let your light shine, Lord. Amen. Sometimes it is hard to see things to be thankful for and things to make us smile during this unprecedented time. Lord, we ask that you open our eyes and hearts to the simple things of each day, the gift of new life, still such a wonderful miracle, the beauty in nature, in our gardens, areas, areas of natural beauty, wild moorlands and other open public spaces where the flowers are blossoming and the bushes, hedgerows, skies and rivers are teeming with life. The sun rises and sets every day and the rain comes to refresh all of your creations. Lord, help us to appreciate the everyday gifts and kindness given to and from those around us, not just to find pleasure in material things. Let your light shine, Lord. Amen. Lord, we continue to pray for world leaders, that you will give them integrity and honesty to do the very best they can 
for the people under their care. That they will put aside their own gains and needs for power and strive for a better world. Give them wisdom to make the right choices. We pray for those suffering from hunger and thirst beyond our comprehension. Let the aid agencies reach them to give sustenance. We pray for those living in war zones, suffering misery. Let there be a ceasefire to enable attention to be given to those suffering. And we ask that those who can make a difference find it in their hearts to join together in talks for peace. Let the country's leaders bring comfort to those living in cramped conditions, unable to distance themselves for any protection from the virus. Let our scientists work together for a vaccine that can be used worldwide. Let your light shine, Lord. Amen. We pray, Lord, for our church leaders, Garth and Ian, Give them strength and guidance as they continue to look after the people you have given them a heart for. Continue to uphold them during this time when new ways of worship are required to reach out. Give them your compassion when they reach out to your people. Let your light shine, Lord. Amen. Lord, we thank you for this beautiful day, so full of your glory, where we can praise you and walk in God's light. This is the day you have made, and we choose to rejoice and be glad in it. Great is our reward from you. We pray that we always remember that we aren't just ordinary people, we are God's redeemed people and he has a great purpose for our being in this world. We should never think that there is anything about our lives that is mundane or unimportant. God can use us in simple ways to accomplish great things in the lives, lives of others, to lead them to his saving grace. Let your light shine, Lord. Accept the prayers we offer. In Jesus' name. Amen. and the collect for today. Merciful God, you have prepared for those who love you such good things as surpass our understanding. Pour into our hearts such love toward you that we, loving you in all things and above all things, may obtain your promises, which exceed all that we can desire. Through Jesus Christ, your Son, our Lord, who is alive and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. And we say together our Lord's Prayer. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. Lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, the power and the glory, for ever and ever. Amen. It's been great to have you with us this morning as we have gathered together to worship a worship that has been streamed from St. Peter's Church. And um, it's a joy to know that each one of us out there is part of the family of God. And that even though we aren't able to gather physically, we are able to fellowship together. And so uh, it's, it's a real joy to have spent this time with you. And I'm encouraged by it. Uh, a few notices, uh, as always. Uh, first of all is our congratulations go to the Uhiara family, uh, to Dr. Joseph and um, uh, Irene's son, Emeka, and his wife, Ellen, who were blessed with a baby uh, boy this week that's just gone by. 
And so congratulations to the family. Emeka used to be part of uh, worshipping here before he then moved up and lives with his wife Ellen now in, in Manchester where he is working. So our congratulations uh, to them. We have uh, a few birthdays this week for which we want to say a very happy birthday to Jean Downs, Hazel Jenkins and Ramola Vasa, all of whom whose birthdays fall this week. We also have a 40, uh, 48th wedding anniversary. Uh, Hazel and Mike Jenkins uh, celebrate their wedding anniversary this week. So congratulations to you, Hazel and Mike, uh, for joining as you join us this day and you celebrate 48 years of happiness and God's blessing and provision. And our prayers are that in the year and the years to come, you will continue to experience God's blessing and care over each one of you. Um, next Sunday, after the morning service that we have on YouTube, we will be having a Zoom coffee morning. And uh, it basically means that if you, it'll give you an opportunity to meet with others who have been in the service and then have a chat and talk about and encourage one another and share what God has been doing in your life. Uh, and so if you are interested in being part of the Zoom coffee morning right after the service next week, then please do let me know and I'll add your name to the invitation list. If you can let me know the latest by Friday, then we will be able to send out the invitations Friday night and then Sunday morning you'll be able to join us on that. The coffee morning will be streamed, the Zoom meeting will be Zoomed, uh, will, sorry, will be streamed live to YouTube. So you'll be able to watch it on the YouTube channel if you aren't able to get on to the Zoom coffee morning. So if you are interested, do let me know uh, by Friday and we will add your name to the list. There will be a host or a, uh, a verger, what we call a verger, who will be there allowing getting people in and uh, just basically managing all the practicalities of that as we share together. We're going to stand, if wherever you are, if you can, as we sing together that great, wonderful Welsh hymn, Guide me, O thou great Jehovah.
as our service draws to a close, I want to close with a few verses from Paul's second uh, epistle to the Thessalonians, the second chapter and verses 16 to 17. May our Lord Jesus Christ himself and God our Father, who loved us and by his grace gave us eternal encouragement and good hope, encourage your hearts and strengthen you in every good deed and word, and the blessing of God Almighty, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit be among you and remain with you now and always. Amen. I'll see you again next Sunday at 10.30 as we gather together once more in our online worship. So we go in peace to love and serve the Lord. In the name of Christ. Amen.